In the years right before uh, the move for Bayer to go purchase Monsanto, they got approval from EU regulators as well as the U.S. EPA and USDA to go in with a new genetically modified crop. And nobody's talked about this crop in the U.S. Our farmers know it's there because we're growing it in the Midwest already. It's called Liberty Link. And so it used to be Roundup Ready crops from Monsanto, but now it's Liberty Link from Bayer. Liberty Link is a creepy enough name to it anyways. But Liberty Link, it turns out, is a different genetic modification to allow for a different herbicide to be applied to the crop. And the mechanism of action is same concept where it's blocking the production of amino acids, which are the building blocks for life. But it's blocking a very specific one in this case. It blocks the enzyme uh, that makes glu- um, glutamine. And and this, uh, this happens to be an extremely important piece of innumerable endocrine functions, innumerable functions of you know, cellular biology, but most profoundly perhaps is fertility, human fertility, depending on this amino acid. So this is the, this is the next evolution of Roundup. This is the next evolution of GMO crops. And it's growing in your Midwest United States right now, and it's owned by Bayer. And so that and got it's wheat. put in place. It's, wheat. it's, a, it's a corn, soybean, corn. Okay. wheat across. They can put it in any, you know, anything they want at at this point, I think. But it's the big staple crops that they're growing, corn and soybean particularly. Uh, But sugar beets and all those are well on the way. uh, But corn and soybean already being grown in the U.S. under this new new crop treatment, which is blocking the ability of that food to carry these essential amino acids into the the food chain. So we have uh, simultaneous fronts on affronts on uh, our soil systems, and then we have the human health impact of ingesting all of these crops on a mass scale, which is disrupting our endocrine systems. It's destroying our microbiome. Like, explain a little bit uh, about how this is leading to all of these degenerative chronic illnesses that we're seeing. Yeah, so, yeah, I think to finish off that political thought, I guess, before my brain can move on, is it makes sense that if you've got a new commodity that could take over the majority of the world, but you're in direct competition for Mon- with Monsanto, who's already mastered 85 to 90 percent of the farm environment, to make the move to purchase that company is a no-brainer because it gives you the opportunity to become you know, a monopoly across both GMOs. It's amazing that GMOs. it passed antitrust muster. I don't think it got even evaluated. I don't understand how somebody could have honestly said they did an antitrust yeah. evaluation of it. I mean, I think when we were here before the, the when you were here before the merger was pending, but it hadn't fully gone. I through thought it was going to fail point. because of the antitrust yeah. issues. I didn't think there was a way that we. Not only that, I just assumed, especially because of our current administration having such a nationalistic, you know, agenda. Apparently. I couldn't believe the last time we talked that it was going to be allowed to go through because what American president would want to be, have that on their track record that they allowed 85, 90% of our, our commodity crops to be owned by a foreign entity. And it's patently anti-competitive because there is no competitor. No competitor. No competitor. And so how it could not have been considered a monopoly is beyond me. I think they must have found some loophole around that issue of, well, we have to feed the world. I have a feeling that's how they snuck right. it through. Well, the, what is the lobbying budget of Monsanto? Or Bayer, for that I mean, matter. It has to be yeah. the, the yeah. GDP of a small European nation. Sure, yeah. And, and they're at multiple levels, right? Because it's not just food commodities. They're also, also in energy, right? Because we've used up and raped our most fertile soils in the United States for the production of ethanol for our cars. And so Monsanto's been playing on multiple sectors politically. And so they're not just food and ag. They're, they're energy and you know, spread across into even military budgets, I'm sure, because of the provision of ethanol to, to the military. So, and now it's pharma. And now it's pharma. And, so you've, and pharma's not new to Monsanto, by the way. Pharmaco owned Monsanto all the way back in the 1990s. And so when, the, when we went to genetic modification of crops... We already were own, our our food chain was already owned by the pharmaceutical industry by that time, and so Monsanto has been owned repetitively by the pharmaceutical companies, and so I think Bayer is making the play now as a big pharmaceutical company to own the global food chain, 
um, and make this weird play for Liberty Link, which is you know going to block this amino acid. So now we why can have I never that. heard of that? Have they purposely just not publicized it and given it this jingoistic, patriotic name to make people feel good about it? Well, I think now I'm predicting the future, and I don't know it. But you know, my prediction is we're going to see a whole bunch of court cases now allowing to go to case, to go to court, because I think Bayer wants everybody to now admit that that GMO ground up crops are terrible for your health mm. so they can pull it off the market quicker and look like the white knights coming in with Liberty Link. See, we're, you're absolutely right. We see, you know, Monsanto refused to tell you this, but we own them now. And we're telling you our science and our review of all of their data is saying it's definitely causing cancer. We're sorry. Mea culpa. And that puts an end on all of the, the and court cases. And just setting aside some crazy war chest to settle all these cases? They had, they, I'm sure they did. Because, I mean, look at how much they're making just off of GMO crops uh, that are still selling Monsanto seed. And so even if the $66 billion bought the company, they can, they're, they've got the income to, to offset the court cases with that. They may have, you know, if you looked at the amount of income expected from Monsanto and multiply that by the typical 5X for the valuation of their company... We might find that the war chest was built right into that as a fudge mm-hmm. factor. So they, so they may have been worth two hundred billion dollars, and they they sold for sixty six billion. And said, hey, we could pay out a hundred billion dollars of lawsuits, and still, at the end of all of that, we pull that Monsanto GMO crop off the market, and we put Liberty Link in play. And so they already have, I think, the end, there's no way a company yeah. as big as Bayer is not going to have an end game in play when Monsanto is already all tied up in these lawsuits. Well, the mm-hmm. lobbying arm is certainly healthy at this point. I just got an email today from EWG, Environmental Working mm-hmm. Group. It was a letter penned by Aaron Brockovich about um, how, uh, how the farm bill that's, uh, that's up for renewal has a provision in it that would allow locality, that would strip away um, the purview of localities to, to ban glyphosate. Yeah. So this is still, you know, this is a war that's being fought constantly on multiple battlefronts. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had people at the municipal level, at city levels, begging for our science to be taken to their local school board to stop spraying the schoolyard with Roundup, you know. And, you know, our, not our, just our group, there's hundreds of scientists around the, the world that are trying to help with this mission. But to see so much resistance down there, you know, I got a call a couple of weeks ago from this woman who was trying to make this fight. And they presented all this science to the school board. And they brought in um, a Monsanto sales rep to, to be there. Uh-huh. And the Monsanto sales rep oh, just got God. more, pulled the Trump maneuver it sounds like where he just got more and more angry the whole time red faced this is foolish this this woman's a you know has no educational background she's bringing all the science like she knows what she's talking about blah, blah blah doing this and then his final closing statement was roundup is so safe that i would be happy for my son to lick the grass right after it's sprayed and so as a scientist having looked at glyphosate that's child abuse yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's flat out ridiculous statement knowing what we know about this. But that emotional argument overcame everything, and mm. schoolyard still being sprayed with Roundup. And so it's the, it's the emotionality of the human brain that's one of our biggest challenges, right? Yeah. And so... Well, we also don't want to really believe that this is going on on such a mass scale. Like, we want to just say... There's no way it could be that unsafe. We would never have allowed it to get to this point. We're smarter than that. Certainly the and EPA to pull does the cover, something. Yeah, yeah, like the EPA has looked at this. There's been a million trials. Everybody says it's safe. You guys are crazy conspiracy theorists. And I think that's been kind of the paradigm for a long time. And we are seeing that shift. You know, people are taking your point of view and the point of view of so many scientists that are allied with your perspective. Um, uh, in a way that uh, we weren't seeing even a couple of years ago. And I think that court case, you know, goes a long way towards lending credence to what's actually happening. I totally agree. And I think the, the snowball is rolling. That's why we've seen this transaction from Monsanto to Bayer. 
I think that the public sentiment, as the public continues to educate itself more and more through you know open channels, will realize that we've known this for a long time. And it's no different than the, the tobacco situation was in the 1960s to 2000. That 40 years, scientists were trying to sue the tobacco companies mm-hmm. for lung cancer and for the damage to kids' immune systems and you know all kinds of horrible things. For 40 years, the, we were at it. You know, yeah. with the doubt, tobacco companies. Doubt is our product. 